Hi there, I'm Jake Comfrey. You're listening to the High Performance Podcast, the podcast that delves into the minds of some of the most successful athletes, visionaries, entrepreneurs, leaders, and artists on the planet and aims to unlock the very secrets to their success. Now, everyone needs a professor in their life. Mine is also a psychologist, an author, and a man who's studied successful sporting cultures for years. So, Damien, I think you're rather going to relish the next hour or so. Absolutely looking forward to it. Yeah, this is... um this is a man that seems to um, create a real family atmosphere in the cultures that he develops to achieve high performance. So I'm looking forward to exploring that. So am I. Right, let's get going then and welcome a man who, as a teenager, was scouted by Marcelo Bielsa, who had a lasting impact on him. He won trophies at Newell's Old Boys, Espanol and PSG as a player. He played for Argentina, getting to Michael Owen pretty well in 2002. <laughs> He's now best known for management. Impressive spells at Espanol and Southampton took him to Tottenham, where he took them to finals. He delivered their best league finish in 25 years. He played football that was as effective as it was impressive. And he left after five and a half successful years. But what are his secrets? His secrets to inspiring people, to selecting people, to remaining relentless to creating culture, to dealing with disappointment, yet still remembering how important family and friends are. What can Maurizio Pochettino tell you to help you live a high-performance lifestyle? Well, Maurizio, first of all, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for letting us into your home to have this conversation. It's hugely appreciated. When I say high-performance, what do you think of? High-performance is... uh to try to be close always, uh, um, to be the best, uh, give your best, uh, be ahead of everything that happened around you, um, be with the best uh, people that you you can uh, find, uh, trying to inspire the, the people and combine the people that uh, been with you, um, try or oh, being, being curious, that is so important. Um, no accept um, uh, that everything that you are doing is is good. Always to put in question yourself. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I can talk during a few minutes. Uh, high performance is um, is always um, trying and trying and trying to to improve, to learn, and and um, be curious to. To, to be in in always in communication with the, the best people trying to to learn uh, and and be and be ready let's talk about Marcelo Bielsa he came into your life at quite a young age how much of an impact did he have on you I suppose I'm wondering whether you grew up with this relentless high performance mindset wanting to be the best and to get the best from people around you or whether it was the influence of people like Bielsa that opened the door for you, showed you the way. Yes, I think Marcelo play a, a very important uh, um, play for a game for for us. All the the, um, the player that were under his management always, uh, I think, um, like or not like your they uh, his method or not or philosophy. I think uh, that we how you introduce uh, that podcast uh, say about to. I think they can um, uh, inspire us. I think that was the most the most important thing. Uh, he if I can um, one definition for him that he. Um, put the seed in my brain uh, to try to find uh, my way um, in in what I, I love it to, to do is to play football and, and then to, to be a coach. That I think was the most important because uh, I am not a follower of him uh, or I am not doing what he's doing because it's impossible because he, he's uh, unique. But yes, uh, he can inspire myself, uh, trying to find my way and, and try to create my own way. I found it interesting, uh, Maurizio, that um, you recount that he came to your house when you were 14 and got you up in the middle of the night to, uh, to recruit you. And then he watched you for five minutes in one performance and decided that he wanted you to be part of, to be part of his team. What was it you think that he recognised in you in that five minutes that made him want to invest his time with you? Yes, I think I was one that after I was successful, but for sure they appear maybe 
like me, maybe thousand histories, Sim maybe similar, but maybe 90, 99% of this uh, situation never been successful like I was, I guess, maybe, no? Uh, in this moment, what you are going to do when you are at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning in a house in the <laughs> middle of nowhere in a town like Murphy, that you knock the door and to people uh, wake up and, and say, oh, we want to see your, your son. And what you need to do is to um, use your uh, seduction, like to, um, you know, to be very nice and kind. I say, oh, what a nice legs. He's going to be the best <laughs> central back or player in the, in the world. And then happen or not happen. You know, yeah. always we, we explain the history that are very successful, but the, the, the history that are not successful. But it's important to know that Bielsa wasn't alone. Bielsa was with Jorge Grifa. Jorge yeah. Grifa, for me, uh, is another very important person like Marcelo, no? Uh, because he was the director of the academy and he was very was a great character he was a great player in atletico de madrid during 10 years i remember always uh, luis aragonés say to me one day uh, jorge grifa learn myself and us uh, how win was a winner and um, you know always all that that situation happened but happened because a group of players. Um, um, Marcelo was a great character, but was um, with one of the best, uh, I think, characters and personality that I, I knew in football, like Jorge Grifa. It's like uh, when people talk about uh, uh, myself, no? But I am not alone. It's Jesus, it's, it's Tony, it's Mickey. It's differ different people that make you look yeah. better. And some, and for me, they are so important, like uh, I am important, and maybe now I am talking with you. But um, today, um, I think uh, football is changing, like the rules are, are changing, and in uh, the model change, the, um, the way to work change, the group of the coaching staff change, um, the player need to be managed for in a different way. Now you need that the group, uh, the coaching staff become the leader. Of course, it's different face, different character inside. But um, now um, we try to to change that mentality that is only one name, one sure. face. Now is the 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 leadership become uh, through the group of uh, the staff. If not today, yeah. the the player need to feel that Jesus is the leader too, not only the gaffer, but Tony the same. You know, all the people um, need to create that um, way. Yeah. For, because the player need to to are completely different, and you need to evolve. And today, the the society and the the young player are living in a different world. But I would argue, but reading. Your own accounts of uh, of of Jorge Griffa. You spoke about him being a father figure, and he yes. was somebody that when you moved away at fourteen, he like you described that he helped you as much as a person, as much as a player. Are they characteristics that you still have in common now, though, despite the different generation? If uh, sorry, if you ask me about about if the the Griffa seemed to uh, seem to coach you as a person, yes. not just as a as a soccer player. Yes, exactly. Um, I th yes, I think was they were ahead of the time. I think Jorge Grifa and Marcelo Bielsa, they were 20, 30 years ahead of the different clubs. And always was make me think, uh, I was very lucky to meet these people that uh, make me better uh, player, but a great person uh, with a great mentality. I seen, uh, of course, my father, my family uh, um, were there and helped me to, to be the man that I am today. But of course, uh, how important are the people that spend 
12 hour with you in the training ground are so important. That is why the people are key and you need to, to have lucky into meet uh, people that can help you to, to achieve your dreams uh, in your professional side and, and of course like a person too because uh, I think uh, can be compatible. Uh, yeah, I think that is the most important when you can see a very nice professional with a great talent uh, very humble people and great people. Um, I think that is the most, uh, for me, is the most uh, value that you can find in a, in a professional. So when you talk about football changing and people changing, in the modern game, how do you inspire um, a 19-year-old who earns lots of money, plays in a beautiful stadium, trains in a beautiful training ground, travels everywhere first class, their attention to detail or their attention span is short these days. As a manager, as a group of managers and leaders, including Jesus and the rest of the team, how, what's the trick to getting into those minds of modern young yes, people? For, first of all, you need to know uh, uh, the, 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 the young lad that you have him from, because all came from a different uh, background. And, uh, and you need to inspire, uh, for sure, Dele Ali in different way that you are going to inspire Hurricane or Hugo Lloris uh, with different age. Um, the, the, when you know and you have uh, the capacity, uh, like a group, to identify the, the profile of the player, to know every single uh, situation that happened in the past, when they were a child, where they grow, uh, they came from Brazil, they came from uh, Ireland, from Korea. Mm. I think you cannot uh, inspire all in the, <laughs> in the same way. And the circumstances are so important because all are in a different uh, circumstance in a moment that you are going to, to face them and to talk with them. And um, the reality change uh, every day and you need to be updated every day about what, what is going on inside them. And, and how do you do but that? But that is the key. Do you that just is the, talk to them well, a lot? Well, that is, that is why that genuine we spend more than 12 hours on the, on the training ground. Right. And how important is uh, not only my closest staff, if not all the staff. Our first thing that when we arrived to Espanol or when we arrived to Southampton or to Tottenham was to work with, with the staff, with the club staff. Mm. Because the club staff, they, they need to understand us, what, how we are, how we need to work, and we need to listen to them, uh, how they love to work, or the habit that they, uh, they have, you know, because they come from different way to work. And we need to, to centralize and to try to create our own philosophy. You need to create your own philosophy. If not, it's impossible, because uh, the kid man, or the chef, or the physio, or the doctor, like the assistant manager or the manager. I think we need to believe and to build our um, own way. If not, if we believe in different way to, to work or to do the things, we are going to crash in some, in some point. And the message that is going to arrive to the player is going to be completely different. And then when the weakness arrive and when the problem arrive, that is going to make you to be strong and stick with your ideas, because always happen. Uh, 11 players that play are strong, mentality, happy, exciting, and motivate, and believe in everything that you are going to tell. But the interest that are on the bench, or the players are not in the squad, they cannot see the door open and to listen different voice. Okay, yes, no, listen different voice, yes, but not different... Uh, way to tra uh, translate the message. And that is so important to stick with the message. But first of all, we need all belief and yeah. we need to be part. The kid man need to put his ideas uh, on the group and he need to, th to feel that, oh, look, my idea is so important to build this philosophy. And if you can create that, it's, it's going to be massive. That is why I think Tottenham was very successful in, in five years. In the moment that we start to to open doors, I start to disappear these mm. these magic things, you know. Um, that is, is is painful to see that, but but um, but uh, that is, is is important when when you are successful, 
to keep them successful um, is to be strong with this and to try to improve in this. Uh, in right. This, so you uh, keep the same exactly. approach, but you improve it. Yeah. So what would you say then were the three non-negotiable behaviours that when you've been at Espanyol, Southampton and, and Tottenham? Yes. What are the three behaviours that define your your culture? Yeah, to be honest, I was changing in my period like a manager in 11 years. Uh, first, uh, first day, I, w I said to myself, I'm not going to negotiate. And I'm going to be inflexible in, in all the situation that I believe that uh, need to be in some direction, but after with the time, <laughs> I was I trying to I think cross the line to the opposite. I try I think that you start to feel that you need to negotiate mm -hmm. and you need to be flexible, like in the game. You know, um, you need to be flexible and not rigid. Um, and I think now I'm, I'm, uh, I am more in this another side that. Why not to negotiate? Why not to be flexible? I think all the circumstances are different, and I think make you to find better solution. And I think uh, you can uh, deal better with the uh, with the problems. And and I think uh, uh, when I was with not experience, I think that is why with no experience I was uh, worse manager that I am today. You know. So what? So. So when did that realization of having to be flexible? When at what stage did your career? I think it was growing because, uh, and then you met people that make you change your vision of the thing and, and you improve. Um, you know, that is why uh, always uh, we talk uh, like a group of um, our responsibility is to try to provide always the best thing to the to the staff and to the players. I think is. Uh, uh, you need to be curious and no stick if something work, believe that is going to work forever. Sure. I think if today work, you need to think that maybe tomorrow no work and we, you need to find a solution or to evolve in this in this aspect. And I think it's, it's so important to have people with this interest in, in about to always thinking that we need to change. We need to change because you need to uh, progress and you need to be better and learn every every day. So that fits with the story that you tell when um, when Bielsa came to Espanyol and you say that he, he made you cry because he said that you, yes. you were in a comfort zone. So how do you stop getting in that comfort zone now that you're a coach? Who stops you getting too comfortable? Yes, I think it's natural now. I, I, I think it um, was a massive shock, shock for me in this moment um, because you believe when you are uh, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 that you are mature enough. But <laughs> if you are, uh, people make you believe uh, that you are God, uh, on, uh, in this moment you stop to learn and you stop to, to grow and, and you stop to, to get mature. In this moment, I seen Bielsa was a massive impact for me, <laughs> telling me I was the best central back last season in, in Spain. But in this moment, you know, I realized, and when he explained to me, uh, I said, yes, what a stupid I was. I was a, like a child, uh, behave very immature and no behave like a, a man that I, I, believe, I, I believe that I was. And in this moment, I think it was a big shock. And I think it was to get mature very quick and, you know, and, and start to, to think and to change in the way that uh, I, I was thinking. So how do you now deal with players who you don't think are buying into your philosophy? What's your approach to them? No, I think, uh, first of all, it's not my philosophy, it's our philosophy. And then... Like the staff, uh, with the staff we build a, a philosophy. I think the player. I think you need to to work with them uh, for them to understand that our philosophy is to try to find the best way and the best tool for them to perform in the way that they, they want to perform. Mm. Because on the end, it's very it's very simple the psychology in football. 
I was professional player. I played World Cups. I win titles when I was a player. Um, some manager maybe uh, didn't play football in a professional side. I play. I know how feel um, yesterday Troy Parrot uh, taking the responsibility in front to 60,000 when 18 year old, the responsibility to to be in the FA Cup or not. And then, you know, I know very well. How I, I was thinking and I was feeling because I was in his in his position when I played Copa Libertadores and, and missed the penalty. Uh, no one can uh, tell me how you feel, and only if you are a professional player you are going to understand yeah. this player. But the player um, is so simple because the player want to play and the player want to be the best on the on the on the pitch. And when you are the, uh, the the assistant manager, the coach, the goalkeeper coach, the first, uh, the physio, the doctor, all they they need uh, to feel the confidence and need to feel the trust in the people that is close to you. And when the player understand that you are working for them, it's not about philosophy to play one four four two or one four three three or play. Uh, more defensive in a counter-attack or dominate the game. It's, it's about that they feel they feel they feel that you want the best for them. That is the the the, the most um, uh, important thing: philosophy, methodology, um, style of football, or different ideas. I think are not important. First of all, they need to understand the player that all that we are going to do are not to punish them. Always, always, if we are not going to give one week uh, off, it's because we want the best for them. It's not because we don't want that then they uh, enjoy life. Yeah. It's because they are professional. Yeah. If after one game and you are going to play another game and if you give three days off and the player go to France, to, to Spain, and Spain, nice life, yes. First of all, the players are going to be happy because you are allowed to go and enjoy with... But after when they are not going to performance on the pitch, they are going to attack you and say, oh, come on, you need to be professional. But that is difficult to uh, create this uh, thin line that uh, be fair when the player needs uh, holidays, when the, the player needs rest, but when you need to push them. Yeah. But always is... For me, that is the, the key, the key point, and the player need to trust in you. If some player one day is running, another is doing gym, another is at home, they need to understand it's the best for them because it's the day preparation that are going to help them to performance in the way that they want in the on the pitch. See, there's a word that you've used twice, Mauricio, that really interests me. Um, you've, so you've spoken about only trust. Twice. And the only twice. <laughs> but, yeah, but you spoke about the importance of trust. Yes. And it seems, looking at your coaching career, that, that you develop a, um, a family feel around the teams that you coach, where trust is obviously essential. I'm interested of how do you go about building trust with players that you've never met before? When day by day. Day by day, this is the only way uh, with your behavior and being natural and behave like you are. I think that is the most important. It's, it's, it's one thing. When we arrive uh, at, uh, at Tottenham, uh, because how we are, we are very close people, Latin people. Um, we love to, to hug, to shake hands, uh, to kiss, you know. And first day that we arrived to the training ground, uh, 27th of May, that we signed our contract in 2014. We arrived to the restaurant, we shake hands with, the, with all the people. Uh, we see the, the staff, we shake hands. We see the, the chairman, we shake hands. <laughs> yeah. That is, when you touch some people, you, you feel the energy. You feel if it's good, if if need love. Is if he's upset, if he sleep well, if you know, you you can have uh, a lot of information that is so important after to manage, because you are not going to manage a robot. You are going to manage a, a person that you are going to ask for the best, and you are going to try to get the best to try to uh, achieve the uh, 
uh, all that you want and that so is when so you important. shake hands then and yes. you sense that there is a negative energy or or there is a lack of energy yeah, negative positive you feel everything yeah so yeah, how but you don't need to be a, a special person i think we have all the capacity to feel i think you you all feel if i shake hands with power with negativity because i like you or because i don't like you is that is the moment to create some link What do you do then if you get a negative yeah. feeling? Yes, you need to find why. Sometimes right. sometime, uh, we, we always talk uh, when we arrive in the morning uh, that you plan uh, to, to do some training session. But after when you feel the group, you say, no, we are going to change. Or we are going for, for some meetings and we are going to talk about some subject. And in the moment that I feel when shake hands or when I feel the the atmosphere on the on the room, we change and mm. we talk about I don't know where. Uh, it's it's always I think it's so important uh, to have the plan, but um, always be very very uh, aware about what the the, the, the player need or the team need in in every single moment because football is like this. It's about to take decision, make decision. In the moment that you know how you feel, uh, and football yeah. is about about feelings. So you speak about energy. The other attribute that you that seems important for you is uh, attitude. Yeah. How do you define attitude? Yeah, but life is about attitude. <laughs> If you don't have attitude, you are not going to achieve nothing. Sure. You know? But people listening to this, how like what would you explain is attitude? Yes, attitude, aptitude. Attitude, you yeah. say. We see. Attitude. No, attitude. Attitude with T. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Sorry. In English, yeah. it's with T. Sorry. It's my Manchester accent. Yes, but it's, it's attitude. In Spanish, conce. Yes. Conce. Uh, Or it's aptitude. No, it's attitude. Conce. Conce. Yeah. Yes, I think it's everything. In life, it's everything. You can have all the talent that God provides you when you're born, or your mom, your genetic, or your dad, but without attitude. You are not going to achieve nothing. You can dream, but without attitude, nothing. You are going to have luck if you have the right attitude. That's so, why, for me, it's so important, the attitude. So if there was a young player listening to this podcast, what would you say is an attitude? So we can use the word, but how would you explain what you look for as a good attitude? Oof, I think you are psychologist. Psychologist, psychologist no? See. My thing is, uh, is not my. Uh, I am not a specialist in that, but all always believe that uh, in that case that you asked me about young lad. Uh, Sometimes we blame this young lad because of uh, their behavior, but we need to go f farther and to find why they behave in the way that they behave. And it's difficult to advise these people if you don't know. From where they they came and they why they behave in the way that they behave, it's easy to detect. Okay, someone is not be, uh, behave in the way that we normally we put in in the bracket that is a normal behavior, but we need to find why and after to find the solution. But the advice is it's difficult to advise if you don't know the people. It's easy to say, okay, my advice is to. Um, You need to uh, trust in your coach. You need to do what your uh, sports science say. You need to let uh, coach yourself. You need to be nice kid. <laughs> That I seen is is easy not to to advise uh, yeah. the people or to have a word. But the most important is not that we know all and and these guys that young guys are clever than us. Because they have information from when they born in after I don't know one year they are playing in the with the apps in our iPhones and they have information through social media and everything and they have the capacity to analyze and to challenge you and that is why they know these uh, topics. The most important is how you are going to build the trust, how you are going to build that they are going to listen and do what you advice that the thing is the most the most important thing to find the way to do this because to give advice is easy and to say oh you are going to crash with the car yes 
I knew too, but let, let me how I need to use the brake, uh, how you need to drive, uh, you know, you need to, to teach this, yeah. this, this uh, uh, young lad. And that is why sometimes it's easy to blame. It's not, uh, it's not ready. Okay, it's not ready, and yeah, we know all that is not ready. That is why he's young. But you need to work with him to be ready. Yep. You know, and that is what maybe is our um, capacity, like a group, to try to create a big group in all the club that we were, like Southampton or, or Espanol, to create, to create the, and to build the platform for the not only the young, the senior player too, or Hugo Lloris with 30 year old be the best keeper and and won the World Cup with France. I think to use all the platform to to improve, like a player, but in an, in in the same way, growing in the same level, like a professional and like a player, you know. And then it's up to them to use this uh, platform. That is, uh, I think, is important to understand. No. How great does it feel when you take? experienced older players, players who've been at a club for a long time, young players, players you've bought for huge amounts of money and you've put them all together and you've made the attitude work. You walk in the room, you feel a good energy, you go out on the field, they play the way you want them to play, they talk to each other the way yes. you want them to talk. No, because I think, yes, I, 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 yes, it's true. It's, it's, it's like when it's so negative, the atmosphere, it's, it's because the attitude is contagious. Yeah. You, you, it's... It's so simple. When you are capable to create a nice environment, happy environment with a good energy, all the people that arrive for different level, different country, different nationality, different culture is going to be, that atmosphere is, is going to be so powerful yeah. that it's going to involve you in this similar energy. Like when it's negative, it's so powerful negativity that is going you can arrive being so nice and positive and smiling but after a few minutes you are going to be, the, be in the same circle no that is why um, we need to protect every day and in every single decision uh, and sometimes when that is difficult for people to understand, understand when the people believe that understand football but football is is simple but in the same time it's so complicated because uh, one thing can change this positivity yeah. and change in, in negativity and all that run well is going to run uh, uh, wrong. Wrong, yeah. Yes, and that is why is is when you win games, <laughs> you need to work more to try to keep winning because it's easy to go down. But when you go down, it's so difficult to turn and again go up. So mm -hmm. when you look back on your time at Tottenham, is the thrill for you? the finals and the big wins, or is the thrill for you improving people, creating a culture, creating an environment of positivity where everyone is lifted up and everyone becomes a better version of themselves? Or is it just three points? What's the thrill? On the any three point, on the any three point, is the way that you, first of all, I think things that I learned from, from the past, from, from the people that uh, work with me, is uh, about that you um, in football uh, you need to create or build things or coach or work how you are you know and we are not going to change uh, I cannot manage the team like uh, uh, Guardiola or club yeah. be or, you no mask you, exactly yeah. you need to be yourself and of course uh, is part of our identity, like uh, coaching staff, in the way that we work. I think with a structure and helping the player to be better, I think you are going to be close to win titles. Um, but it's because we believe in this way. Um, but of course, uh, when I was a player uh, or when I was a child, I, lo I always win. I always was about to, to compete. I love the game. I love to play football, but more than play and, 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 and the game, I love to compete. <laughs> I want to win in everything. Um, that is why sometimes you know, the people talking is, is play or compete. For me, in a professional high performance, is compete. 
Yeah. But for 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 be the best uh, competitor, you need to be professional, and to have a plan, and to have organization, and to create uh, this or uh, to build this platform that is going to be um, uh, the best thing to to help you like an individual player, but a collective player because football is a collective sport. And I think is when you today you start to to think in uh, in football uh, you need to think that the, it's not anymore the football that okay you buy the best player and because you are going to buy the best player of course you are going to if you have the capacity to invest every season 300 million and you are going to be um, to bring the best player in every single position of course you are going to be close to win more than if you don't have this type of capacity or quality player and not only with the platform you are going to win but I think when the mix is you can have the best player that you have that you can uh, find with the best platform to perform I think you are going to be close to win big things for sure I'd like to get your thoughts on fault versus responsibility because I believe that lots of people hide behind fault they blame everything else for things that aren't right. Whereas we should all take 100% responsibility for the situation we're in. And I often look at football managers and I think for you and for Jesus and for the whole team, the whole management team, there's always lots of people and lots of things you can blame. Ah, oh, blame the referee. Ah, oh, blame the goalkeeper. Ah, oh, blame the missed penalty. Blame the crowd. How important in life is it, regardless of your job, to take complete responsibility for you and for your surroundings and for the direction your life goes. Yes, uh, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a very interesting question because uh, you need to be responsible about your life first and you need to, to feel that you drive your life and you need to be confident that how you are going to drive your life is going to, uh, to bring all that you... is going to bring all that you want. Mm -hmm. um, and then is the idea that you are going to translate that, of course, it's a lot of circumstances that can happen during uh, a game of football. The VAR can, in, can be good or bad for your interest. Uh, some decision can affect, yes, but in a short period. Or on the end, it's going to be uh, similar uh, for you and again you. But I think you need to always think uh, that is your responsibility. If you don't win the game, it's because you need to improve and be better the, the next day. And circus and circus in football, um, if we talk about the final of the Champions League, uh, you know how the VAR was using after. Uh, that was penalty. That's uh, another that was more clear handball, wasn't penalty. You know, that can affect. Uh, but if after that we were maybe capable to score twice, Two goals, for sure we win. We were better. We were better than Liverpool. I profit to say that. We were better than <laughs> Liverpool in this final. We deserve more. And we propose, I think, and we dominate. And they score, of course, and they win. Uh, some circumstances that affect us. But I think uh, if we show, show this capacity to score more goals than your opponent, for sure you win, but it was our responsibility to lose the to lose the, the final, and we cannot blame the referee decision or the VAR decision. But you know, in this business, all is possible. Uh, all is uh, you you need to accept all the ideas and all the way to work and the, analyze the the thing that happened in the in, in football. You know. So how long does it take you to process a defeat? How long take how me to move on? Yes. <laughs> I still thinking. Um, I think when it's a massive disappointment in in your life, uh, of course that that is, is is football disappointment, sport disappointment is completely different when the real life uh, affect you. Um, yes, it's, it's it's going to be you know in in some point it's very proud to 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 help a club like Tottenham to achieve the the Champions League final and and to work and and I think made an unbelievable season. Um, 
but in some point really sad because it was a great opportunity for us to to be in the history of, fo of football and yeah. and to provide the fans a massive uh, happiness and for us uh, to say we were capable um, with everything again uh, uh, to be very successful i think we were very successful but always like uh, the, we were talking in, in uh, when we started the, the the podcast is yes the society it, uh, put if you leave the trophy, you are very successful. But the second uh, is yeah. is a failure, no? Yeah. And but we are not thinking like this. Uh, but of course, uh, that is 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 uh, make you sad because, of course, the people recognize the the job that was fantastic. But um, to finish winning. Uh, the Champions League uh, should be an um, amazing, amazing history. mentally, when do you draw a line? So, yeah, so, yeah. so mentally, when do you draw the line and say, right, we forget it now, we've had the disappointment, we now look forward again? How long does that take you before you make that decision? I wanted to move quick forward. Um, but I don't want to say nothing that... Uh, you know, because now it's in the past. Uh, I think it, what Damien means is in your head, when do you decide, right, there's no point focusing on a defeat now, now we go forwards, because I, what's the benefit to dwelling on no. a defeat, you know? Monday, that was Saturday, Monday, I was thinking in, right. in to try to build again. Uh, Almost immediately. Immediately, yeah. yes, because when you are so competitive and when you are a winner, you know, stuck in the in the in the past. Uh, you lose, but you want to win tomorrow again. You want to play and to start to work into build. But you're able to do that because in, you've reached a point in your life, as probably as Jesus, where you can use failure or negative experience as an energy source. You can do that, can't you? That drives you onto the next thing, yeah. But not everyone can do that. Some people just get knocked by failure. They get knocked by disappointment. I wasn't knocked because of we didn't win the final. Because it was a massive, we want to take like a massive experience for us and learn and to be ready again for the next uh, season. Because we were fighting to be on the top four. In the same point that we were fighting to be in the final of the Champions League against Manchester City or first Borussia Dortmund, Manchester City and, and Ajax. And we were fighting to be in the top four. And we with Hurricane Insure, with Son that no play the first few months because was, uh, we gave the possibility to be in the Asian Cup to try to avoid the military service. Yeah. No one told or one uh, talk about that uh, because today Son is in, in Tottenham because we allowed them, yeah. allowed him to go to play two competitions that wasn't uh, compulsory for an Rather to say, no, be selfish and say, no, because I am the coach, I need to win. Son stay here. But for because of the club, because if not two years, and you need to mm. stop the contract with, with Son. But no one say nothing about that. That was my decision or was our decision to pro provide him the time to go to... We, we didn't have in the first six months, we didn't play with Son and then was insured too. Or different players that were, were insured. But I think that the most important is when you are a, a, a winner and you love to compete, and you move quick yeah. on. But the problem was how to move, you know, and to start again to build this new project mm. that for me was finished, the chapter was finished with the final of the Champions League. How, how do you learn that though? Like forget the Champions League and even forget Tottenham. In life, how do you learn to get defeated or beaten in whichever circle and then to move on again. How, how, is that, how do people learn to do that, to stay positive? With experience, because only with experience. When you suffer the failure, when you suffer the, and you are very successful, when you are very successful today, to, you, you need to feel that tomorrow doing the same, maybe you fail. And you say, why? And you put in question yourself. And when you fail, you say, oh, I need to stick with my ideas because I'm going to, I need to be strong because tomorrow I can win. 
I think only about the experience. I think all um, when the people we talk about to read, uh, to listen people. Um, it's like when your kids are are young and you say, "Don't touch this, because you are going to 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 burn your finger." Yep. Don't touch because, you're, but until they don't touch and burn their finger, they they not stop to or they try to to touch. Because why? Because the motion make you uh, create experience to after. Yeah. Don't make the same mistake, you know, and, and learn. So failure is good. <laughs> I don't like failure because I fail a, a lot. But I I think all the in life always you are going to have the percentage yeah. of failure and, and successful are going to be in your life, no, in different... Uh, so what would you say has been the most um, valuable failure that you've had in your career? <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe the, the, sometimes the smaller are the, the bigger uh, um, uh, things that make you improve. Uh, I think every single experience... Uh, with emotions, uh, when you because uh, in every single experience you create some emotion, uh, make you if you if you uh, are um, aware about that, make you capitalize capitalize the the experience with that emotion and make you for sure better. Um, always we said. Um, I, I am seeing the, the laptop. It's like a, you have a memory there with um, after with the software, and you have a capacity after to store experience with emotion. And if you in your brain you have the capacity um, inst with the, your instinct, in, instinct to find the, the best experience and with emotion, you, for sure you are going to find the, the best solution for every single uh, um, situation that happens in your future. No? So is there one particular incident where it, you look back now and you can recognize how valuable the lessons that it taught you was? Yeah, I, I cannot say one. I think plenty or thousands of experience uh, that in every in every single circumstance make you to realize uh, that maybe you need to change or you need to do the thing better. Um, but many, many, I think many. But of course, the, the last one was was the champion of the the final of the Champions League. Or are you a better manager for losing the Champions League final? No, I am. I'm not better manager, but it's, but it's true that uh, that experience. Is going to make me to to try to find uh, for sure to make me uh, give uh, if I gave my best I'm going to give again uh, my best but uh, I'm going to step more further yeah. you know that is uh, a because I don't want you, to yeah. I don't want to feel again yeah, that yeah. that emotion and. And that experience, for sure, like a group, uh, is going to make us to to if we are we are going to face again a similar situation. Of course, that we need to put different because it's going to be different circumstances, But try to to be further in in our preparation or in the way that we are going to take the decision for sure. And is it a good reminder that even in a world as exciting as football, you need to stay connected to the real world, the world outside of the game. Because when you have these low moments or even the high moments, the reality is not football. The reality is the real world. Is that important to you? Yes, the problem is for us, the uh, real world is football. It's our, our real world with our family, our friends, uh, the fans, the board, uh, the people that work every day with you. Uh, that is our real world. Um, I don't know. I think the problem is um, sometimes the stress or the pressure about the money, about the business, make you to lose the focus that football is a game mm -hmm. that you need to behave natural because it's, you are a, a talented people that you are involved in football because you are talented, not because, because of money or because you play football or we coach football, not because it's our way to... Uh, 
is our way to find money uh, to enjoy what I what is my passion. My passion is football. I don't need money. I play football because I love the game. Our responsibility is to say football is not an ordinary business. And people need to understand. But today is managing this game, this spirit, this uh, passion, this obsession. Uh, all that is managing for people that only think maybe in business. Yeah. And sometimes they believe because they are in football involved for 20 years. They believe that understand all that emotions and that psychology that only you understand, you were involved in the dressing room, or you touch the ball in front to 100,000 people, or 100 million when you are playing in the World Cup, that pressure is, is not when you are you in front, I don't know, or when you are talking in front to the TV, or in the radio that the people is listening to you, that affect your psychology and, and your decision. Football is... It's changing. It's so, it's so, it's so interesting. It's so interesting yeah. how future is coming, no? About a foot, about football and how it's going to develop. Can I jump in and ask a question? Yes. Before we, before I'm conscious, we need to wrap up. I'm always fascinated that you shared a room with Diego Maradona when you were a teenage boy. What one lesson did you learn from him, the greatest footballer of all time that you've carried through to? To today. Yes, lucky that we have some pictures and can show to my kid <laughs> yeah. that, and my friend that I was with Diego Maradona when I, I was, uh, was playing with him. But imagine today to have an iPhone and to have the capacity <laughs> to record every single moment with him in, on, the, on the room. And put it months. on Instagram and put it on Twitter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. But you know, to, to keep every single moment in, in, in yeah. because, of course, uh, I have good memory, but to, to, to record everything like this, I think was amazing. I think this, the, what I learned from, from him, uh, again, is not about football, yeah. because he was a, was a genius, he's a genius. Uh, it's about how simple he was, huge personality, the best player in the world, um, how humble he was, and the spirit of that he was like a guardian of. Uh, protecting the spirit of the game, the football is collective, and how he respect his teammate. That is, I think, was the most important thing that I learned from him. He was playing for him, but more for to try uh, to to help the team to win. Okay. And always, when you talk, uh, I was lucky to, to to share with him six months, but every single. Uh, teammate that he has, all talking the same way. He was playing for uh, for the team and always was a was a leader, a natural leader, a great leader. That he no need to put the arm on or he no need to say, oh, I want to talk. Um, he was a natural leader inside to the dressing room, inside to the pitch, and. That you have or not have. This is not a university that is going to provide you how to behave, how to be a leader, um, or you cannot buy in the market, on the supermarket, uh, um, uh, the, um, a book that is going or to how to be a leader, that you are or not. Yeah. My final question, and actually Jesus could answer this as well. Of course. All the things that you've learned, all the highs, all the lows, all the travels, all the journeys, when you next stand in front of a bunch of football players at a new club, what's the first thing you will say to those players to get them immediately understanding what is required from you as a management team? Yes, I think always I think is the key, the first synthesis, the first word, the first uh, hello, <laughs> when the first you met and joined. I think more than the verbal sentences of word is... Your, your attitude and your energy that you are going to translate the, the player. Um, but for me, it's easy because I think for in general our, our meeting always is about the first, always is about um, we are here to try to help you 
to be the best and to be better every single day. And we need to, to split professional than human side and human side I think you are always you are going to have uh, people that always is going to care about your private life uh, we are going to be there if you need some advice about because we are older than you but and then my decision my our decision our professional decision cannot be affected for our personal relationship. One thing is we are friends, another is if you deserve to play or not. And no mix that is so important. Yeah. Always we explain we start or we start this our conversation in this way. I think to make clear that my decision is not personal. If I play Jesus or, uh, instead you, <laughs> no because he's my friend, no because I love him more like a person like you because I believe that he can uh, provide to the team or give to the team better things or in this moment is more uh, fit more in this in, in some game for no than than you but it's not take personal and the day after you are right to the training one and not shake my hands or not say hello it's nothing to do with the you know yeah. with my decision so the, the footballer and the person are two separate I think, things i think it's two separate things of course listen thank you so much for giving up your time today i you know we really appreciate it i think the, the big takeaway for me from this conversation and i know that you're a believer in universal energy is just bringing positivity into the room if you bring positivity then what can go wrong right people might still fail in the end but by bringing positivity you're not doing anything wrong you know it's all Taking, yes. taking no. something in the right direction. It's and like this. And then it's of up course. to them. Exactly, it's up to them and it's like this. Brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, thank you too. We really appreciate it.